aspect of their their standard and their 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 traditions. But I'm going to give you some time to go call your folks. Okay, okay, you wives out there, these fellows who keep in sweetheart. Hello, they're coming for you too. And how these chicks got y'all all tie up, huh? Some of y'all fellas are there, marry these people. Y'all don't know how y'all get down the aisle. Y'all don't know when y'all say I do. I can help you today. I can help take that smell off you today, boy. Because let me tell you something. Plenty of fellas tie up like pretzel. They like zombies. They don't know. It, but by the time that, that, that fix come off them, Christ and come judge and gone back. They ain't know nothing. <laughs> but your boy is here today to empower you. Okay? And if time permit, I'll give you a short piece of my personal testimony, all right? But this is going to be a multi-part series because there's a lot to cover. And what we're going to do primarily in the first part of this series is to take you to the core of it. And the core of it would be the covenant, the covenant they have established with that man and that evil altar. And how the, 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 the spirits of that altar is literally, literally dictating the course day by day, hour by hour, second by second, the man lost. You ever see that? You ever see a man who hate his own children? Huh? After you come up with a particular person, huh? isolate himself from his family, all kind of weird stuff this dude start doing. No, everybody saying he loses his head, he crazy, send him to the asylum, send him to crazy. No, 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 he ain't crazy. He ain't crazy. He is oppressed. And, and, and based on the description I just gave you, it's not as if he is possessed by a spirit or spirits that they sent to the sky. As usual, I don't talk nonsense. I will give you line upon line and precept upon precept in regards to scripture to support every word that I say. All right? And I, I intentionally said that because those who have a problem with it, stop waking rich because it's you I talk about. That's the only reason why you're mad, right? You're mad because this boy come in exposing all our secret. All right? I hope this keep you at least this weekend on the graveyard. But anyway, we ain't going to the day. But I can expose you through the word of God and show you how evil and wicked and how determined some people are to get their way, even if it costs the lives of others. Just to give you a short little clip, I remember several years ago, I got a call from a, a young lady and she told me someone uh, turned her on to me in terms of my teaching. And she called me in regards to her, her brother who uh, was experiencing some strange stuff that he was with. Anyway, I tell her, go on and explain these strange occurrences that was happening to him. And she did that. I don't want to go into detail with it. Anyway, uh, he had an issue and he was sent to be checked by the doctors. So it's my minor issue. Doctor check it. And of course they said, yeah, man, we could just apply some medication here and take some so and so for X amount of days and everything would be fine. So he stayed to the hospital like for about two or three days. And so the doctor decides to run a few more tests to check other areas to make sure everything is clear. And this boy, who only had the slight problem, all of a sudden have stomach cancer, brain cancer and the works. His body parts began to swell up, all kind of stuff. And when he was reading after they went him through the MRI and all these x-rays and stuff, the doctors were baffled as to what they saw compared to what they previously saw, which these two just didn't make no sense. So as she was telling me the story, she said, the reason why I'm calling you is because clearly this makes no physical sense. I'm not a Christian. Uh, I'm not, you know, I don't believe in these things, but... But something just don't make no sense. And basically what she was saying is that she has exhausted all physical uh, reasoning. There has to be something more to this. And clearly, if it isn't physical, then it got to be spiritual. Anyway, his situation was so grievous that the doctor said that they couldn't do anything for him. So they sent him back here to, to Freeport. And she asked me if I could please come and pray with him. I said, sure, man. I, I would. In fact, I pray about it on the phone right there and then. Because when I hear these things, I become so upset because of my situations. Anyway, he came down and she made provisions for me to come and see him at the, the hospital. And I went there and as expected, 
you know, parts of his body is swollen, uh, the other part is okay, and of course he's unconscious. And what people don't know is that this person is under a spiritual hole, the spiritual spirit of them oppress. So anyway, to prove this, which I knew would have happened once we go into prayer, so I, uh, I brought my oil, anointed him, and we begin to pray. And I begin to pray, according to how he started to do stuff that he never did before, because he was in responding period. And as we begin to pray, and I may really quote those scriptures over him, he started to jerk and shake, almost as if there was a fight. Now, I wasn't shocked at all because me being uh, aware of these things, know that there's a spiritual fight going on here now, meaning that his human spirit is now fighting these the spirit or spirits that were sent to oppress him. Anyway, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed. Uh, the sister had some instructions that he left with her in the event that something were to happen to him. And of course, she had no control in terms of enforcing those instructions because this guy was married. Anyway, long story short, when he went home, he died immediately. Right? Now, looking at that from the surface, not understanding spiritual things of the spiritual world is quick to just, you know, sweep it in the corner and just throw it over the trash. But when you look at the details of what has happened, and you, you, you pry more into it, you now see what's really going on here. So I said, I said, so tell me something. Did he have any dreams? Because I know this is normally the case once a person is under witchcraft powers. So she said, it's funny that you would say that because he's had multiple dreams, repeated dreams. See, because once you're under these powers, and this is so interesting, and I hope you are listening out there, because the, the person or persons that's doing this spiritually to this person, for whatever reason, will always be revealed in the dream. Now, when they're revealed in the dream, the, the behavior is basic, is basically the same in every case. They're either trying to feed you, cook something for you, trying to inject you with some sort of, some of some form of syringe. There's a some intercourse, intimacy in the dream, or you. If you don't get that, where you're, you're gonna, you're gonna definitely see the pe the people who are doing it to you. But now you begin to see a lot of dead people in your dreams, or you see them following you. With this, now that's from the dream realm. So you're basically having a peek in the spiritual world to show truly pulling the strings behind what's going on with you. Now, in the natural world, to tie into what's happening spiritually, that person is going to, you're gonna see some major changes in this person now. And the first changes that you're going to see in this person is a state of confusion. They become confused. And when I say confused, that confusion comes with forgetfulness. It comes like they, they cannot make decisions or they always be twix in between. They always forgetful, frustrated, easily angry. Now, what's happening here? Because remember now, you know this person, and you never know them to be this way. Well, what you're seeing here now is the evidence of what's been sent at them, and that's oppressing them, because there are two states here. The initial state in, in which they are oppressed is where you will see these signs exhibiting, meaning that they, you say something to them, they, they get angry, but not your regular angry, like violently, ferociously angry, frustrated, uh, little to no patience at all. Now, the reason, again, this is the oppressive part of it. The reason this is happening is because the reality is their human spirit is contending with these foreign spirits that has been sent to them. Now, the other side to that is where the person becomes possessed by the spirit that was sent after them. In this case, this man who used to be a no-nonsense uh, real man, no, he is now submitting to this particular woman, wife, girlfriend, whatever. 
what that means now is that it's almost as if he doesn't have a mind of his own. And the most obvious sign of that is a part of that fix or, or spell on him is he automatically begins to detach himself from those who have any type of influence on him. That would be his, uh, his children, that would be his parents, his siblings. All of a sudden, he's cutting them off, literally disassociating himself with these people. And the more that he does this, the more he is entwined in the clutches of the person who's doing it to him. I, I try to help you. I try to help you this today. So he's moved from a state of where he tried to fight it originally, where the oppressive forces was challenging him, to where he gave in. Now, what happens from here? Because this is an evil spirit, and of course I always tell you evil spirit have no loyalty to human beings, that house, listen to me carefully here, there will be no peace in that house. Zero. No peace at all. You will hear cursing the F word, you, and I'm talking, why is this? Because this person who did this to this man, they had no idea that what they was introducing to this family were spirits that they didn't even bargain for. So the spirit now is coming to divide. But the idea here, what they thought, the one who put it on this person was that, I can make this man love me. I can make this man be committed to me. Yeah, a spirit will come and do that. But what they didn't tell you was all of these other forces that's coming along with it. And the evidence of it is the change in this man's behavior. I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to just take a short break. This is going to be hot today. My Lord, my seat and all getting hot, man. DJ, you don't get no ice in there. Come throw some ice on the seat. Too hot today. So I just want to take a break right now. I want to uh, give a shout out to my good friend, Caroline Green. Caroline Green is responsible for this shirt. For those of you who are looking at my camera right now, and for those of you that are listening, you can go on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, type in Minister Kevin L. Ewing, and you will see me live. Nice, handsome looking fellow in the black shirt. That's me. Anyway, you can see me live right now. And I'm wearing my spiritually vaccinated shirt. I'm vaccinated by Psalms 91. She sent this for me. And she has two books. Two books. One is called Build Faith and Restore Hope. Decrees, Declares, and Prayers for the Incarcerated by Carolyn Green. That's this yellow one here. Okay. And then we have the revised second edition. Power words to renew your mind, decrees, declare, and prayers. Create breakthroughs in your life by Caroline Green. Now, after the show, for those of you, I'm going to tell you what to do right now. If you want one of these shirts, she has a website, she has her books on Amazon, but I'm going to put all of the links under my uh, YouTube page, and I'm also going to put it under my Facebook page. Because you really need to get a cup of one of these shirts, please. I, I am begging you to support her. Listen, she got a lot of stuff. You could visit her webpage, but all of that information I'm going to put there for you. So take a look at it. Let me see myself here. Make sure you could see me properly. Here we go. That's right. That's me right there with that nice shirt on right there. Okay. Uh huh. So you need to get your shirt spiritually vaccinated by Psalms. You know what? Let me stand up so you could see this, man. I want you to think I play in here. <laughs> All right, take a look at that shirt. All right, and you need to get yourself, you need to get yourself one of these. All right, get one for the wife. All right, you only listen to the government, so you might as well get sure you can be spiritually vaccinated. All right, <laughs> okay. So now I can tell you now. All right, the American uh, government, if you did not get vaccinated, they will not accept this shirt. <laughs> okay, <laughs> to get into their country. So you'll have to get vaccinated if you're, you're traveling by, by plane, but get. One of these, I love it. She got one for me, one for my awesome, beautiful wife, Deidre. Can't keep out her own. But anyway, you need to get yourself one of these. And again, I'm going to put after the show, I'm going to place all the links under all of my social media platforms. So you'll have access. You could place your order. And please, you could go to Amazon. Again, I'll put those links here for these books. I'm putting it up in the camera right now. Take a look at it. And please get a copy of these, all right? She's an awesome, awesome person. I spoke with her, I think, about two or three weeks ago. 
and she gave me an awesome testimony how she actually got connected with me and some friend Caroline I was I forgot to ask you your friend's name I wanted to give them a shout out nevertheless I'll probably do it next week but I was so overwhelmed because when I hear stories like hers it is just amazing how what we're doing here is reaching so far I have a listener all the way from Easter Island Easter Island right that's there by South America somewhere and I was just taken aback by thank God for social media and I just thank God that I responded to the call to go into the world and preach the gospel and social media has been a a major tool in our propagating that I don't know what propagating mean but again it sound good right there okay work with this brother <laughs> okay but let's get back to this thing man because this is too too juicy this is too juicy so listen to me now I want you to hear me well all right so that man that man is now at the state I tell you that initially his spirit man is fighting it because he know that there's something going on with him but it's not physical he knows this, and this is what's making him agitated now if if the Lord could have opened your eyes spiritually to actually let you see the invisible forces beating not on the physical man but on his spiritual man and this is why he cannot explain these weird feelings that's happening to him okay the feeling then moved from that state but well, before we get to the to, to the, the possession we're talking about the oppression right now then we can talk some more about the oppression then we can go to the scriptures okay the feeling he's feeling on him that is so strange and like i said to you he's confused he cannot understand he cannot make up his mind and make decisions so what happens from there because there are stages of it and what it really is is just spirits doing one doing their job and then they're passing the baton on to the next one passing it on then they come right back one on that circle again so now the baton of anger and frustration is going to now pass it on to the spirit listen to me carefully now of depression so the man now goes into bouts of depression you'll find him back on the porch sitting down in the dark he don't go nowhere no more okay he right there and, and, and this woman who got him all tied up like a pretzel you know she can play like she knows she don't so what happened to you honey what's why are you why are you so quiet and listen that can trigger him right off why because that spirit of anger and not just and this is how you know it's not his human anger because those who know him those who know this man they don't know him to be this way they don't know him to use obscenity and profanity this way because there's a spirit on him tormenting him now remember and that's why those who go to Obia people are fools. They are fools because they don't they have no idea. Listen to me, I said this to you over and over. Satan, demons, evil spirits have no loyalty to humanity because they're eternally damned already. So whatever they're doing for you, fool, that's going to them, you're going to pay. Those who you're involving in this is going to pay. Even though you went there for that man, you will pay eventually. So now he's in a state of depression. He's sitting down. He's trying to figure life out. One minute he's happy, one minute he's sad. He on his job, it's almost as if he's spaced out. Why? Because these are the spirits. There's that tormenting spirit on him, and the idea is to, to treat him like a volleyball. You keep, keep the ball up in there, and that's him. He's the ball. You're just bouncing him from place to place, but never making any progress. I'm trying to help you. So what you're seeing based on his behavior is the physical evidence of the invisible demonic forces that has been sent to this man. His children could notice it. They run and kiss and hug daddy. No, he ain't into that no more. Mind you, he don't hate them. And when they leave, he's crying. Boy, what are you crying for? You're crying because he don't know what is happening to him. He feel as if something heavy is on him. He feel as if like someone is going to die. Like he cannot even explain the feeling why. Because he's spiritually oppressed by these evil powers. That there, there is a covenant. And that's what we go today. There is a covenant that this man has been tied to an evil covenant. Where spirits has been assigned to his life to torment his soul. Mighty God. My Lord. No contentment. No. What's the next stage after that depression? 
Now what creeps in here is insomnia. He can't sleep in the night. Up all hours of the night, cannot sleep. Cannot, he can't find pleasure in nothing. Whatever hobbies he had before means nothing. Why? Why? Because there's a spirit assigned to torment him. For, sorry, spirits. And as we are about to go into the scripture, you're going to see firsthand how he has no knowledge, zero knowledge, zero knowledge that his, his articles, where it is, his toothbrush, where it is, whatever it is, they got on some altar. If they don't have it there, then what they did is they took stuff from that altar. Their things that they were, was mixing his food. There was a place that he was ordered to sit down, not knowing that it was, because all, because that's, that's what the covenant is. It's seeking the agreement between those spirits and that human that was facilitated by this person who's doing it to this man. And to show you how cold people are, they could sit right there and watch you lose your mind, watch you don't go totally crazy, huh? And act like they don't know what's happening to you. Mighty God, I try and educate somebody today. I try, I tell you, get your no good cousins, them, your old bear working auntie them, and tell them you was hiding all along. Come, Kevin, come to expose you today. You're too no good. All right? Now, remember our topic men under witchcraft power. So, what is the saying is that what is happening here, the source of what is happening here is spiritual. Spiritual. Any Christian right now who say all that man is talking about is Obia, they are Obia workers. You know why they saying it to you? Because they don't want you to listen to this. So we can expose they no good ways right now. They too no good. Tire people life all their life. People life was limited because these generals of Satan's camp. But oh, Kevin coming to deal with them today. Oh, I coming to deal with them today. All right. Now I want you to go to Deuteronomy. Where's my thing now? Deuteronomy. Chapter 7, and we're going to see some stuff what God had told the children of Israel in regards to these things, okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Oh, this is a hot one today. Boy, I hope you all right. Write these things down, yeah? Listen to me carefully. Plenty men under the sound of my voice. Some crying right now. Listen to me because what this man saying is true. See this man been there. Like I tell you, I like the rest of preachers. So like you went to school and studied doctor stuff, and they had no experience. I live it. I live in it and I thank God for it because now I can come back to you with the evidence and tell you what's happening to that man. Mighty Jesus, I love you. So let's go here now to Deuteronomy. All right? Deuteronomy chapter 7, and we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 5, okay? Now listen to this. God told the children of Israel, He says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess it, which would have been the promised land, Canaan, and has, excuse me, cast out. Many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Parasites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite or kill them and utterly destroy them, thou shalt make, listen, listen carefully. Listen, because the nation, he's telling them to kill him because you would say, my God, what kind of God these people serve? He's a killer. No, 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 no. See, you're just looking at the outside. He's looking at these people whose power is sponsored by the bowels of hell. Listen to this. He said in verse 2, And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly, utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenants, no agreements with them. Mm -mm. You all hear this? No covenants with them. Listen, listen. Nor show, show any form of mercy. Don't show none to them. Because the minute they get a kink in your armor, oh, they're taking full. They, they are going to be merciless towards you. Why? But Kevin, why? Why is this? See, because they are under under evil powers. They serve other gods. So God says, do not do, do, don't have no covenants with them. Period. No form of agreement, alliance, no nothing with them. Because as you're going to see, this now becomes the key in changing the 
destiny of an individual. Mighty Lord. But it's too hot today. My Lord, it's too hot. Listen to this now. He says, covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Uh huh. Verse 3 of Deuteronomy 7. Neither shall thou make marriages. Oh, oh Lord. Oh Lord. You all hear this? You all hear this? Oh Lord. He said, listen what he said. Do not marry these old bear generals. Don't marry them. No, no. Why, Kevin? Why, why does marriage seem to be so grievous? Because you're not just physically becoming one. You are spiritually binding yourself to whatever evil entity that they serve. My Lord. I hope you all hear me here. Young man, before you say I do, okay? Tell you love her. Now tell her, take you to her people. See, the people ain't into you. They, 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 they ain't gotta, they ain't gonna let their hair down. And if that's what you see, if you see she come from a lineage of sweetheart keepers and old bear workers and that stuff, homeboy, listen to me carefully, huh? Listen to me carefully, all right? Now, I don't normally do this, but for you, I can make an exception. I will go down to Playtime store right now. I plug in them in right now. They even pay me for this. This is on them right now. This, I do this for them right now. That's how serious I is for your life. Go down by Playtime Sports Center right now. Tell them give you the best cleats ever. The blessed, what they call them? Sprints, you need that right because you can need that. And if they could put some motors on that, that's how far you need to run from these people. Because I'm telling you, when you bind yourself to them, you are changing the course of your destiny. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you today, you know. I'm being comical because I'm trying to give you this pill slowly. Run for your life, all right? Go call Carl Lewis and Hussein Bull. Tell them train you because you need to know how to run. Okay, listen now. Verse 3 of Deuteronomy 7 says, Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto your son. Do not let your children marry Obear Waker children. Very simple. Okay, verse 4. For they, if you do do it, for they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods, small g, lowercase g, not the God of Abraham. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Mm-mm. Wow, verse 5. But thus, this is what you should do. You shall deal with them. You shall, listen, destroy their altars. This is what we're going to talk about. Because you see, the altars, where they have this man's life, this person's life tied up, that is where the agreement was made. This is where that altar, the spirits at that altar told this woman, if you were married, if you want this man leave his wife, if you want this man marry you, if you want this man fall in love with you, well, here is what you do. Okay? Now, I can go a little deeper for you. Keep your finger right here, all right? Keep your finger right here, because I will show you something, all right? Lord, that's too hot today. Boy, you all better go get your, go kapuki and baba, you all go get your no good and uncle. Okay? They are too no good. Listen to me carefully. Listen to this, okay? Listen to this carefully. Now, I can put this under my feet when I'm done, okay? There is a book. I had this a while now. It, they stopped printing it, but I downloaded it from the internet. And this is a book written by a Bahamian, and it's called 1010, the Bible 10. And all of y'all know what that is. All right? Listen what it says. Obey in the Bahamas. It was written by Dr. Timothy McCartney. Okay? Published in 1976. I've studied this book inside out. But let me read a little passage here for you. I will help somebody today. Okay? Listen to this. Bahamian mothers warn their sons from eating and drinking from everyone, especially from the home of a woman that has available daughters. Bahamian mothers may brew a special drink for their sons to give them long, to give them lifelong protection. Now, you see your mother jacking you up, right? Because now, she giving you something to drink, and there ain't no prescription coming for no Bible. She giving you something to drink, which is uh, 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 in, in the world of sorcery, with the idea to protect you from if someone trying to do something to you. 
So you'll hear a lot of men out there say, boy, Kevin, and I've heard this, Kevin, boy, I listen to you, but I need you, boy. The lady done fixed this up a long time. Yeah, and, and, and what did y'all get saved and get baptized? What, how did she fix y'all up? And the same thing that he would tell me, right? Listen. He goes on, he says, mothers may brew a special drink for their sons to give them lifelong protection. They can also, listen, wear their underclothes on the wrong side, put herbs in their hat bands, or if salt is put in your shoes, no one can put anything down for you. So if you walk on it, you'll be protected. Y'all listen to this? Y'all hear this, right? How you gonna fight Obia at Obia? Make help me. Make me understand. See, if see if people like me don't come out and teach, you will never hear this. You will never hear this in no church. You will never hear nobody preaches. None of this. So therefore, you are vulnerable to these things. Don't hear these big words I use in me, right? So listen to this now. If you don't notice, you know, all you see is this pretty girl. All you see is this handsome fellow. That's what you see. You see a girl who got a master's degree and whatever, and he got an MBA and whatever. That's that's all you see. You don't know who's sponsoring them. You don't know what their people tell them to do to protect themselves from you. So this thing then start off wrong. Listen to this now. I finish. Just get nodded, nodded. Listen to this. He says they can also wear their underclothes on the wrong side. Put herbs in their hat bands, or if salt is put in their shoes, no one can put anything down for you. Or if you walk on it, it'll protect you. But what is protecting you, though? Is it the blood of Jesus? It is Jesus Christ? Are the angels? No. All of this information that you're giving you, this came from an altar. This was, this was the consultation of evil spirits to witchcraft practitioners to give to those seeking solution. Listen to this. For a girl to catch a man or to make a man fall in love with her, listen to this carefully. She can take a bath during her health, then take the dirty water and make a pot of peas and rice. Listen, if the boyfriend eats this, he is caught or he is trapped. I hope you are listening. Like, come back to this. Let me put this down. I can put this down right now. Let's go back to God's word. You all will be awake. Just listen to me. If I'm helping you today. I'm helping you. All right? God tell the children of Israel, make no friends with them. And what I just read to you is the very reason why. He said, this is what you do. Verse 5 of Deuteronomy 7. But thus shall you deal with them. You shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. So now when they go into the promised land, he's telling them these are the things you're going to come across, but don't look at them lightly or just foolish hard work. He's saying what they are, it is the source of the spiritual power that is governing this nation. My Lord, meaning Canaan at that time. Mighty Lord. My Lord. You all hear this? You all listen to this? So, Let's look at another scripture. Let's go to Exodus chapter 23. I'll give you some more meat on this. Exodus chapter 23. And we're going to read from verse 25 to verse 33. All right. Exodus 23, beginning at verse 25. And he shall serve the Lord, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land, the number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, this is God telling, promising Israel this now, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come, and I will make all thine enemies turn their back on thee. So God is telling Israel, if you do what I tell you to do, okay? And don't participate in the foolishness they do over there in Canaan, which was straight up evil powers. He says that I, God, not you, will subdue your enemies. I will see that no one will be barred among you and all of these promises. So that means that if they begin to lose their war, lose war with their enemies, if there's some among them that's barren, then it is as a result of their disobedience, meaning that they're engaging in some of the practices that they were told not to. Now watch this. Verse 27 of Exodus 23. I will send my before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come, and I will make all thine enemies turn their back unto thee. Verse 28 of Exodus 23. And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the 
Hittites from before thee. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. Verse 30 of Exodus 23 says, By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Listen, listen. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the sea of the Philistines and from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Listen, listen to verse 32 of Exodus 23. Thou, he's telling them what not to do now. If, if, if I get, God is saying, if you want me to supernaturally do these things for you, I'm talking to someone out there right now. Someone said to you, I think they got you fixed. I think they got witchcraft on you. I think they got Santeria. So child, put the salt here, burn this candle here. If you're, if you're listening to what I'm reading, you are not to fight fire with fire. Verse 32 says, Thou shalt not covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in the land, lest they make a sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it shall surely be a trap unto you. Okay, what you mean serve their gods? When you went to these people for that man, you didn't went to a pastor, you didn't went to an apostle, you didn't say let's pray for him, you didn't say let's whatever. No, you went to somebody who you know good and well is an agent from the kingdom of darkness. And God is saying here in his word that the day you went there, you, 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 you cause a trap to be set amongst you and those who you go in there for. Let me, let me read it again because you probably listen to this. Listen to this carefully. He said here in verse 32 of Exodus 23, Thou shalt make no agreements, meaning that when you were at that altar and they burned that candle and they went on with some kind of ritual and they asked you to break some eggs or drink some liquids or rub something on you, you were making a covenant with the spirits at that altar, and when you left that place, unknowing to you, you, you told a spirit with you. Now you may say, well, no, Kevin, that ain't so because I went there to fix this man. You still ain't listening, you know. You still ain't listening to me. Spirits, evil spirits have no loyalty to human beings. The fool that come there, they're going to take advantage of that fool and the person who they came there to fix. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you today. So he says here in verse 20, 32 of Exodus 23, Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods, meaning their idols. They shall not dwell in the land, lest they make thee to sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, if you go there seeking solution and remedies from any other god other than the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the god of Gideon and Ezekiel, he said, it shall surely be a snare unto you. And the word snare means a trap. It shall be a trap unto you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. Turn to Exodus chapter 34. All right? Okay, now why do you turn into Exodus 34? We're going to read from verse 12 to verse 16. Exodus 34. Verse 12, verse 12 to verse 16. Now listen to this. Before I read this, before I read this, let me read this next piece here, right? Listen to this carefully. This is another way in which men are trapped, all right? I want you all to hear this now. I ain't making this stuff up. i read it to you, and again, this is for educational purposes because you will never, never hear this in a, from a pulpit, never. And I could say that with complete confidence, all right? Because it goes against begging you for money every week. Listen to this now. It is recommended, listen, if a lady wants to grab a hold of a man, meaning she wants to capture him under supernatural powers, meaning that he, don't, he hate her, he can't stand her, but she wants to supernaturally make him love her. So therefore that means there's a spirit now involved that's coercing, coercing him, Love this woman, but his human spirit is fighting it. This is why they're all fighting and cussing and carrying on at each other. Okay, 
they take a break, make love, go right back at it again. Cussing, throwing blows at each other, stay up the court steps, but, but he ain't going nowhere because his destiny is tied. So, <coughs> excuse me. So another way they're telling you how these women just tie these fellas and they say, take one of her uh, sanitary pads, soak them in warm water. Listen to this. Take the water for use in preparing your food for her boyfriend. If he eats this, then he is caught or he's hook, like we say in the Bahamas. But this makes perfect sense because I could show you scripture after scripture where one of the rules for the children of Israel, that once a woman is seeing her health, that she had to be separated from the actual group. And it is forbidden for a man to sleep with this woman while she's menstruating. But another part of sorcery is that woman, I, I listen fellas, I hope you're listening to me because I'm trying to help you. Listen to me. What she would do is that she would insist that you sleep with her while she's seeing her period. But Kevin, why is she doing that? She's doing it, listen to me carefully, because she was advised by the practitioner of that altar who serves another God. That in order to get this spirit to convince this man to quote unquote love you, which is a bunch of nonsense, then this is the ritual you must perform to invite that spirit there. I'm trying to help you. Get mad all you want. And if you're mad, you're so obey awake, and that's why you're mad. Listen carefully. You hear this? So in most of these rituals, you could directly link them to scripture. And it will always be something that God forbid for his people to do. But you have to defy God's law to invite the spirit. Let's prove it. Let's prove it. Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. If thou shalt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe to do none of his commandments, listen, listen, then shall these curses come upon you. So every satanic evil voodoo or their ritual that you are asked to do, it's violating the laws of God to invite a particular spirit. So they will tell you go to the graveyard and you must go to a grave where a young child died or an old person or some relative and do a certain ritual. To what do we do that? But that, that person who is deceased have no communication with the site. Again, you're being deceived. Try that. So there's a story of a grandmother of a family of a beautiful girl. And this is true now. Anytime she saw a young man that she thought just right, for one of her granddaughters, she would invite the young man to her home and invite him to sit down in a special chair. Once he did this, he couldn't help but marry the girl. You all hear this? Because again, all of these things require a covenant, okay? They're gonna either put something personal to you at an altar, do some rituals, which will now direct the spirits to you because spirits are not on my present, so they need something to represent the person. It has to be something such as their clothing, something that they would have worn, not nothing new, where their sweat is still in it, fingernail clipping, particles of hair, blood, semen, any form of liquid from that human will be at that altar, okay? If they don't do it that way, then the next step is uh, to get a, well, and of course, and this will also be a photo or something of that person. The next step would be, because they cannot have access to the personal materials of this person, then they have to place this evil, which the person would not see, in a place where they know the person will come in contact with. For example, you would hear stories of, of oh, I hear they put something down for Brother Tom. What do you mean they put something down? What they meant is that they know this particular part, Brother Tom, this walk, so they bury it under his doorstep or they put it in this particular. So when his foot or feet made contact with that, that's the agreement right there between the victim and that evil that they got from the altar. So you'll now begin to see the changes. Now, if they cannot do the thing at the altar, if they cannot put nothing down for them, then the next thing, which is the more common one that is happening now, uh, they're going to come at you in the dream. And for the most part, you will see a lot of masquerading spirits in the dream. What do you mean by that, Mr. Ewing? What I mean by that is you're going to see a lot of faces that you're familiar with, but it's not the actual people in, the, in most cases. They're the, they're the spirits from that altar whom 
the person who's doing this to you is communicating with, a part of the package is where these spirits masquerade as people that you know to again achieve your cover, achieve their covenant or the agreement in the dream. Okay, for example, let's say they're sending a spirit of sickness at you or infirmity, as the Bible uh, calls it. This spirit now will come in the form of some ex girlfriend or even your wife. They may come to someone who you're familiar with, and the first thing they want to do is to have intercourse because intercourse is symbolic spiritually of covenant agreement. So, whether it's your ex girlfriend, your current wife, or whoever, that spirit is masquerading. The minute you do what you do in that dream of that, and you don't rebuke and challenge that dream when you wake up, listen to me carefully, watch the changes in your life. Because what you've done spiritually is gave that spirit the right to intrude or invade your life. It didn't have the right before. So let's quickly go into Deuteronomy, sorry, Exodus chapter 24, 34, all right, beginning at verse 12. It says, Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where thou goest. They said, Be for a trap in the midst of thee. So God is constantly saying to us, Anyone who put their hand to sorcery, you, you, it is a trap for you, even though you're coming there to do it to someone for whatever reason, or if you come in there to buy luck, or you want long life, or you want to take a curse off of you. If you make the decision to go to the devil, because that's what you're doing, for solutions and remedy, God is constantly saying in his word, listen and listen well, this is a trap for you. It don't look so now because you're desperate for a solution. But trust me, down the road, all they doing, because they know the devil could heal nothing, they just moving. The, the devil that was there originally doing this to you, a greater devil is going to come to remove that one, and now you're going to have that pain or sickness in another part of your body. But it will never leave you. So this is why I'm saying it is a trap to you to go seeking these people and places for solutions that only the God of Abraham could give you. So he says in verse 12 of Exodus 34, Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But you shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. What are these things? These are the paraphernalia in which they summons their spirits. So God says, you won't take or bear the land, you got to go at the root. Verse 14 of Exodus 34 says, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. Least thou make a covenant, verse 15 of Exodus 34, least thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call, and one call thee, and thou eat of the sacrifice. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden now, listen, listen to this. All of a sudden, they made sacrifices. They say, okay, you, you want Kevin, right? Okay, so this is what you do. Bring a piece of meat and whatever, and we can bless it over this altar. Bless my foot. And so they do their rituals right there, all right? So they call you up. Hey, baby, listen, I was thinking about you. I read down here uh, uh, this restaurant here in, in Port Lucayo. And my, I don't know, my mind was just on I feel like doing something sweet for my baby. Do you feel like eating some steak today? My Lord, I can smell a one sauce right now. Stupid you, right? <laughs> Greedy you. You jumping for this. Yeah, bring it. Put some. Make sure they put some saute mushroom and, and onion all over that for me. Huh? I want that slithering all on the side. Yeah? Them old demons all around that piece of steak you're talking about. Listen, would they sacrifice at an altar? They're now bringing to you to eat. Because in that, in that, are those spirits coming to shut you down. Let's make some sense of this, because I tell you, I don't preach fool, I just preach scripture. All right? Now, let's go to, where is it now? I have this written on radio. Okay, let's go, let's go to First Kings, my Lord. Because we're looking at how they're trapping you now through different and various means. Let's go to First Kings. You all know this one, chapter 13, and we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 10, right? You all know the story, right? And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. So Jeroboam at that time was the king of Israel, and he was uh, paying homage 
to his demon god at that altar. He didn't serve the god, even though he was the leader of God's people in Israel at that time. He didn't serve God. He was an evil king that served evil deities. In fact, he was engaging in the very practices that God told him not to do prior to them coming into the, to, the, to the promised land. He says not to do those things that they do. Don't serve their gods. Kick down their altars. Don't be burning no incense. Well, he was doing it. So God sent this prophet who the Bible never named and begin to now read the right act to Jeroboam, well not really to Jeroboam, but to the spirit at the altar who was causing all of the evil through those uh, children of Israel, primarily Jeroboam, inviting the spirit through their worship of it. Remember God told them, do not worship no other God, least, least they set a snare or a trap for you. So watch this. So the Bible says here in verse 2 of 1 Kings 13, and he cried against the altar, who? The prophet. The prophet wasn't talking to Jeroboam, who was the king, who was at the altar, because there's only two of them there. The prophet and Jeroboam with his incense paying homage to the altar. And it says, and he, which is the prophet sent by God, cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O oh, altar, altar. Now this is interesting because this man, it appears as if he's talking to a heap of stones, because that's what an altar was back then. Picture me right now looking at this mic and talking to this mic as if it's a human being. Well, the reality was there was a spirit there. Now, you and I may not be able to see it, but this man of God, he saw it. So he isn't speaking to Jeroboam, who is the only human being there other than the prophet. He's speaking to the spirit behind or the God behind that altar, small g. So he says, and he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O oh, altar, altar. Thus said the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests and the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. So the, the prophet is telling him, Altar, you spirits, God is sending a man by the name of Josiah, who's going to grab all of these evil priests of Israel. Because remember, they didn't serve God. So those priests serve the same spirits that Jeroboam, their king, serve. And so now the, the prophet is prophesying what's going to become of this altar, this spirit, and all of those who engage in this wickedness. So he says, Josiah, by name upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. Verse 3, and he gave a sign. Who gave a sign? The prophet. The same day saying, this is the sign which the Lord had spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent or torn or broken, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Verse 4, 1 Kings 13. And it came to pass when, the, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, because as far as Jeroboam was concerned, this man is disrespecting my idol. He's disrespecting my shrine. He's disrespecting my God, lowercase g. So the Bible is very, very clear here. Listen what it says now. And it says in verse 6, And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, of the Lord thy God, and pray for me that my hand... No, 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 I, I jumped ahead of myself. Okay, let's go back to verse 4. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he... Who is he? Jeroboam. Now remember, only Jeroboam and the prophet is at this altar. No other human being is there. But he, which is Jeroboam, put forth his hand, meaning he's pointing at the prophet, put forth his hand from the altar saying, lay hold of him. But Jeroboam, you losing your money. Who are you asking to lay hold of this man? But only you and this man of it. Only you and this man there. Jeroboam is telling, advising, or commanding the spirits at the altar. Attack this man. Who do you think he is? Now Jeroboam is going to see who power is greater. Oh, I love this story. Yeah, check this out. It says, And he, Jeroboam, put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold of him. And his hand, Jeroboam, which he put forth against the man of God, dried up so that he could not pull it. Not only did he it stay in the upright position, but the Bible says it dried up and he could not pull it back down. That's when you come against a true man of God. Not these set around you begging to call himself God's anointed. Anyway, we did it. So listen. 
the Bible says, and his hand which he put against him dried up so that he could not put it back again. Verse 5 of 1 Kings 13. The altar also was rent or broken, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Okay. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, or oh, oh, now you believe in the God of Abraham. And pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. Now, before I go any further, let's be clear. Israel at this time was basically a satanic kingdom in the sense that they did not recognize or serve the God of Abraham whom they should have been serving, okay? Instead, through and by their leader Jeroboam, they, they was into Satanism. They served idols and other deities. They had groves and high places where they would put their, their idols on the highest mountains and peaks and now begin to pay homage and make sacrifices for these gods. So that means everything they did in Israel at that time was connected to the God that they serve. I'm telling you this for a reason. Watch this. Verse 6 says, And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was. Verse 7 of 1 Kings 13. And the king, this is powerful, and the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. Now this is powerful, because God know how much they into witchcraft and obey. God gave this man instructions prior to him coming there. This is the same when your mommy and daddy tell you don't eat from nobody. I don't care who they is. Do not eat from these people, right? Watch this. So verse 8 says, And the man of God said unto the king, If thou will give me half thine house or your kingdom, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I, listen, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this no good wicked place. Well, he didn't say, oh Lord, I just throw that in there. Verse 9, For so was it charged me, or commanded by, the, by me, by the word of the Lord, saying, God told him, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou comest. God is saying to this young man, These, This place is so heavily entrenched in evil powers. Don't eat nothing from them, don't drink their water. In fact, this, the way that you came, you entered into this place, do not return that way. Go to the back door. Because everything around there is to tie you to their spiritual deities. So, let's make more sense out of this. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 23. And we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 3. And then we can drop to verse 6 to verse 8. Proverbs, I'm trying to help you today. Proverbs chapter 23. All right, Proverbs 23, beginning at verse 1, 1 to 3, okay? Listen to what it says. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler or a king, consider diligently what is before, before thee, and put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. You're so greedy, you eat everything. You're only looking at the consequences. Verse 3. Be not desirous of his dainties or his meat. Why? For they are deceitful meat, meaning that it isn't what it appears to be. You don't know what they put in there. Let's drop to verse 6. Verse 6 says of Proverbs 23, Eat thou not the bread of him that have an evil eye. You know that it's white witch. You know they no good. And you eating all this party and, 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 and Danish with cheese and, 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 and cherry and thinking it. You, you, you know what they're dealing with. Eat thou not the bread of him that have an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Listen, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saying he to thee, but his heart is far from thee. Mm, you like that? Eat some more. Yeah, man, we make that specially for you. Tastes good, eh? Mm. Mary, come bring some more. Put some more icing on for me like this. Yeah, eat, 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 eat. Yeah, man. My casa, su casa. Eat it. Go on, eat it. Listen to verse 8. The morsel which thou hast eaten 
shall thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words mighty God man it don't get clearer than that it don't get clearer than that the Bible is warning you you know what they deliver don't take nothing from them whatever they offer you tell them no no you could be hungry like a hostage tell them no you know you could pass on the sale because the Bible says listen their heart is far from you they're trying to do you in let's go to Judges chapter 2 Judges chapter 2 gave you plenty of scripture today we're building our foundation Judges chapter 2 okay and we're gonna read from verse 2 to verse 3 Judges chapter 2 verse 2 to verse 3 it says and you shall make no league God is telling the children of Israel now again again do not they're already in the promised land now do not make a league here means a covenant an agreement all right you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land you shall throw down their altars which is the source in which they call up their spirits but you have not obeyed my voice why have you done this wherefore i also said i will not drive them up from before you but they shall be as thorns in your side and their god shall be a listen listen a snare or a trap unto you you know many people have altars in their home but you don't know that you know many people have cauldrons in their closet you know many people serving satan and and probably in church raising their hand and but look at their life see this is how god tells you he says by their fruit you will know them why is it you were saved for seven thousand years and nothing good has happened in your life all of your children are dying young or their teens and so on and and nothing not a one of your children made something of themselves because when you put your hand to those things listen what the bible says you set a trap you don't see it now because that devil got you focused on i can get this man right here he can i can make him leave his wife he can marry me okay he ran you but he don't love me you can see who love who and you go and you wake half a pound over on this man and guess what the reason why is not of god that's why you stay rowing you stay cussing and fighting police tie coming to the house there tie the right now report only for y'all to go to court and say y'all forgive each other and then you punch him right down the minute you come to court again why because the spirits that you ma'am has assigned to that man is working against all y'all and those spirits are just passing the baton round and round the baton of frustration the baton of anger the baton of domestic dis the, the abuse it's a cycle you you brought it there you brought it there why because you wanted someone who didn't want you you wanted to force them to love you but it don't work that way sweetie it don't work that way now his head may be tired but trust me even if he marry you there will be no peace in that marriage there will be no peace in that relationship fight after fight after fight after fight why mom because you when you went to the altar when you went to the graveyard when you went to whatever when you put this in his chair when you did that in his food he was jacking up life for all y'all. Yeah, he can get the brunt of it, but those spirits having a field day on every last children, everybody connected to that house. Everybody will fail. Everyone. Why? Because of what you brought them or what you had sent them. So don't come around you like you was no kind of no victim and you don't know what's going on. There was a covenant that was made, right? Now, let's go to Psalms. Let's go to Psalms 115, verse 16. Psalms 115, and we're going to read verse 16. All right, and listen to what it says. It says here in Psalms 115, verse 16, The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. Listen, but the earth had he given to who? To spirits. No, I didn't read that. The heaven belongs to the Lord, but the earth he gave to angels. I didn't read that either. The hurt the earth he gave to Satan, no. He gave to demons, no. Unclean spirits, no. So who did he give the earth to? Well, what I'm reading here, it says that he gave the earth to the children of men or human beings or mankind. Okay, let's read some more facts. Let's go to Psalms chapter 8. Let's go to Psalms chapter 8. People on the foundation here. And we're going to read from verse 4 to verse 6. He says here, what is man? That thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him what makes him so important God verse 5 says for thou has made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him who's the same man with glory and with honor listen thou madest him to have dominion who 
Spirits know. Devils know. Angels know. God know. Who, who, who God gave dominion to as it relates to this planet? Well, I'm reading here uh, in verse 6. Thou made him still have dominion over the works of thy hands or over God's creation. And thou hast put all things on this. God says, again, more proof. Mankind have given dominion and authority over this planet. Let's look at some more proof because we're going somewhere. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 26 and verse 28. Verse 26 says of Genesis 1, And God said, Let us make who? Spirits? No. Angels? No. Demons? No. Unclean spirits? No. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have what? Dominion, authority, rulership. Okay, over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle and over the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So who God is giving all this power and dominion and authority. In other words, when God created creation, who did he hand the keys to as the landlords for the earth? Mankind, that's us. And what would that be? That would be spirit, body, soul. That's us, try your own being. That's us. Drop down to verse 28. And God blessed them. Who is this them? The try your own beings. Did God bless the spirit? Demons? No. Angels? No. Who did he bless? Mankind. And who were mankind? They're the ones that he gave the keys to earth to, to manage, to lord over. Verse 28 says of Genesis 1, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Since Adam and Eve, be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue, or take authority over it, and have, listen again, dominion or authority over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. So, so Adam and Eve, who will represent mankind, you are in charge. Now, why am I taking you this route? Because I want to now to take you on a deeper level of how these spiritual things operate as it relates to Obey Voodoo, Witchcraft, Santeria, and how these Sangomas and Witch Doctors work, right? Every human being, okay, have the ability to invite spirits whether it's evil spirits, whether it's the Holy Spirit, or whatever the case may be, because that's how it's designed. None of them could arbitrarily come in and do what they want to do, and that's a good thing. Because of those rules, no evil spirit could just jump on you and drive you out of your mind or make you rip off your clothes and walk the street naked. There are rules that protect you, all right? In other words, you would have to engage them or they were engaged on your behalf for those things to happen to you. So the three scriptures that I just gave you has made it unequivocally clear that God, as far as rulership here, we, 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 we have to give the authority. So in the world of sorcery, what they do is they consult spirits, okay? Evil practitioners, they consult spirits and the spirits now advise them. So as I'm about to take you, every warlock, every witch, Every wizard, every false prophet, every those who deal with high-ranking secret societies and so on, there is a familiar spirit attached to them. This spirit is the one now that's communicating between them and the spiritual realm, but, but only them can hear it. Now, with that said, people go to these psychics, tarot card readers, and voodoo workers, Seek for knowledge that they would never know. So this is how it all starts. So she think her boyfriend scheming on her, or her husband scheming on her, or she want a particular man. So they go to these people. They initially consult. So they will say, I, I mean, I'm, "I'm seeing in the spirit where your husband is having an affair on you." So all of this inciting her now, and wow, I think he have. I see where he have a child on the way. With another woman. Now I don't know this woman, but I see she have nice curly hair, bright skin, and I see a tattoo right here. So the wife or girlfriend, whoever now, they know who that is because this is the one who he was denying all along. But I'm showing you. Listen, listen, listen to what God says. He said, "Do not, do not fool up with these people because they're setting a trap." So now part of this consultation is what is to advise this woman what to do. So here's what you do. You need to go get this, mix that, do that, and put this on this pillow or 
put this in his shoe and all of not knowing that this the, even if she didn't take the advice the mere fact that she came there she's now going to leave with a spirit and don't even know and that spirit is going to monitor her till the day she died so every time she come back now the spirit is now consulting with the practitioner and so now this practitioner quote unquote can predict what's happening in her life seemingly this is no different from these evil so-called false prophets we got proliferating throughout the Bahamas and throughout the world right now. They're not consulting with God. They're consulting with evil spirits. And every time they're speaking to you, their spirits are going upon you. Okay, you don't believe me right now. I'm glad you don't believe me because you know your boy going back every word that he said with the scriptures. Okay, so let's go here to uh, Revelation. Uh -huh. Revelation chapter 6. Then we're going to go to verse 13. Verse 13 and verse 14, right? Listen, and I saw three unclean spirits, okay, which look like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So the scripture just revealed to us, like how Satan always mimic God's kingdom. This is the trinity of the kingdom of darkness. The uh, dragon, which would be Satan, the beast, which would be the false prophet, which would be the antichrist, and Listen, the last person in the Trinity, the false prophet. All right, now let's drop all the way down to verse 14. And they, they are the spirits of devils. What is that? The spirits that was coming out of the mouths of these three beings. Go back to verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast. Listen, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So when that false prophet or prophetess, whoever is telling you, child, your husband seeing somebody. Listen what the Bible is saying in their consultation with you. All right. The Bible says that John said, I saw spirits in the form of frogs coming out of their mouths, but they're speaking to you. So you think these spirits going on? They're going on you. So you see what I said? You, you're going to leave whether you agree with what they're saying or not, whether you engage or what they're advising you to do or not, you have defiled yourself by being in their presence or being among them. You don't look convinced. So let me give you some more scripture. You don't look convinced. Let's go to Leviticus. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 19. Uh huh. And let's look at verse 31, I believe it is. All right. Listen, Leviticus 19 verse 31. Regard not them or pay no attention to them, listen, that have familiar spirits. Look, what are these familiar spirits? I just told you. Like what was on the false prophet, the dragon, and the beast. This, these spirits that look like frogs. They, they accompany every one of Satan's agents. He said, regard not them that are familiar spirits. Why? Why shouldn't I be dealing up with them, God? He says, neither seek after wizard. Do not go running after these people for solution and what the future hold. If they are not true men and women of God whose lives uh-huh exhibit the fruit of a follower of jesus christ you need to run in the opposite direction regard not them that have familiar spirit neither seek after wizards witches or warlocks why to be defiled by them what does the word defile mean it means to corrupt something that's original it means to to tamper with it to tweak it to to add or take away from it when you shouldn't have been tampering with it at all. So you came there, never had no spirits on you. But you said, I believe this, but I just come to see what they say in anyhow. What they say in anyhow? I just can let them read my palm. I don't really believe it. I can let them do the tarot card, but I really, it don't matter what you believe. Because you've engaged the law that has now given the spirit that's coming from that person to now rest upon you. So now you take this spirit home with you. Now guess what's going to happen? Boy, I hope you all listen to me, you know. Listen to me because what I'm saying to you, it's going to make sense because it's going to add up right now. Ever since now, you have no idea they went, none of the children know, the husband know, nobody know they've been to these older people. But guess what's going to happen? The dreams are now going to be like crazy for each one of the family member, but particularly to the one who they went there for. If they took stuff there for that person, the dreams are going to come. And what dreams are they going to see now? They're going to have dreams where they will see the same person who's at the altar. They will see them in the dream, but they will always see, always see these strange entities with them. 
tall dark beings or midgets what they call uh, pan and all these other things and you're trying to figure out why well, I keep dreaming about my wife or my girlfriend and like she always in these strange places you will see them at something would appear to be an altar or you will always see them at banquets banquets with a whole table spread with meats and so on and eating or even feeding you but all of this started when they came from that altar and brought the spirit back with them they don't even know God forbid if they decide to take up the witch warlock or whoever on the consultation and they now tell you now bury this particular dead animal in the yard put salt in his shoe take your sanitary napkins and mix it in the food and do all this foolishness the man don't know nothing but what it's doing though it is changing the destiny of this man the man who you know okay who was giving you some some flag before or all I can get shut down right now because all they doing was assigning the spirit by spirit to this man so you're gonna see these weird behavioral patterns in this person life but they're not crazy it's the spirit influencing them you don't look convinced and I like when you don't look convinced because I love to back it up with scripture so let's go to first Kings now See, I don't talk nonsense. I don't give you no stupid riddles and rhymes and, and tell you God can turn that thing around. No, it ain't turning it around because these are the impediments that needs to get out of the way, the covenants that was never broken, and then that person or even yourself will be able to go forward. Talk sense and sense from a spiritual perspective. So let's go here to 1 Kings. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 22. Now remember all of this here, it's just foundational work. This is a series, and each episode we're about to go deeper. All right, so let's go to First Kings, and then we're going to go to verse 21. All right, and of course, we know the story. I repeat the story all the time to prove my point in terms of what is the true purpose of a spirit. And the, the purpose of a spirit is to influence the behavior of a human being, whether it's a spirit from God. Or whether it's a spirit from the kingdom of darkness it is to persuade or to encourage or to coerce in other words it is to to impose its will on that person to do something they would have never done before under normal circumstances so in this particular story to prove my point how spirits operate especially those that are sent specifically to a person to alter their behavior towards someone else this story is going to give it to you. Long story short, this story is about uh, King Ahab, who was the king of Israel at the time, and his counterpart, King Josaphat, who was the king of Judah. Right? Uh, Ahab was going to fight uh, Ramoth Gilead, those people over there, right? And so he asked the assistance of his counterpart, Josaphat, if he would come with him. And he said, yeah, I'll go with you, but let's hear from a man of God to see the way whether God wants us to go fight. So Jehoshaphat, sorry, Ahab said, man, look here, I got 400 prophets. Who already say I can, I can win this war? So you can go ask any one of them. So Jehoshaphat knew that even though this was just going apart, this dude on a different run. He says, let's get a man of God. So they went and get this guy by the name of Micaiah, who was a prophet that Ahab didn't like because he never, according to Ahab, spoke anything positive to him. So long story short, the guy, they went and take him out of prison and they brought him there now to prophesied away for it. So when you take it from verse 21 of 1 Kings chapter 22, all right? So now he had this vision, okay? And he said he saw in this vision where the he saw the, he saw the Lord and the host of heaven on his left and on his right-hand side, right? They were all spirits still, humans here. And they said, and God said, listen, he's talking to the spirits now. The Lord says, who will go and persuade Ahab? So let's take it from verse 21. And sorry, let's take it from verse 19 of First Kings 22. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. Who is he? I am the prophet. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw, this is the vision now, the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hope of heaven standing by him, on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, listen now, God is speaking to these spirits. God said, who, meaning who of all of you spirits, shall persuade, shall encourage, shall influence, shall coerce Ahab, 
that he may go up and fall or die at Mount at Ramoth Gilead. And one spirit said in this, and another said in this manner. One said, "Will you go?" The other said, "No, will you go?" And there came forth a spirit. This one is volunteering now, and stood before the Lord and said, "I will persuade him." Listen, I will persuade him. Verse 22, and the Lord said unto him, who is him? The spirit. This is not a human. How will you persuade him, Mr. Spirit? How will you do it? And he said, so the spirit is obviously of the male gender. He said, I will go forth, uh-huh, listen, and I, which is the spirit, will be, which, what are you going to be? A lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. The Bible is clearly telling us that the 400 prophets who prophesied, because they're all false prophets, who prophesied that Ahab, you are going to go before Raymond Gilead and you can kill all of them. So the Bible is now giving us the spiritual background behind all of it. And it's saying that a spirit who was given authority from God to go and pers to convince Ahab, but the way that he did it is that the spirit influenced the belief of the 400 prophets. This is a lying spirit. And all of them agreed and believed and now prophesying. What am I saying here? Lord, I'm saying so much here. I'm saying to you, how many of you went before these lying prophets and prophetess? Boy, listen here, yeah? I thank God the day I surrendered to spiritual rules and laws. And that's what caused me to leave these places I used to go to and see it for what it really is. All right? What I mean by that is, when you cut out all of the pageantry and the jumping around and the conventions and all of these other things and get down to the core, boy, listen, that's when you can say, boy, I was really blind. I mean, I was really, I was out there exposing myself not knowing the spiritual implications behind me and how much of it I influence through my ignorance. So the Bible says a spirit influence the 400 prophets to convince Ahab. A spirit did that. So the, now let's take that same principle. They went to these people, all your underwear and stuff, they're all kind of candles, they got burning on it, all of these different foods and stuff on this big table with different stuff and that's the altar. And what they're doing is now sending the spirit at you. But you don't know what's the spirit. You don't know what's making you feel this way. You feel agitated. You feel angry. You always uh, feel upset. You don't know their spirit just tag team with each other. Okay, spirit of anger, you finish with them? Okay, now, spirit of depression, you come now. You finish the spirit of depression? Okay, come. You spirit of frustration, you come now. Then they got you. You can't remember nothing. But you don't realize that the reason why you're this way is because they are sending spirits at you. Their forces, their things planted on that property, their things in that home, their things that you're eating that's causing parts of your body to swell up. Ever since this woman started feeding you this stuff, all of a sudden, all kind of things start happening to you. Why? Because through the food, they sent a spirit of who? Infirmity, which is what? A spirit of sickness. I'm trying to help you. Let's go to Luke chapter 13. I'm trying to help you. You don't gotta believe me though. You don't gotta believe nothing I say to you. That on you, buddy. That on you. You know you could you could run out the most garbage. And what I love about laws, whether they're physical or spiritual, it does not require your belief. In fact, you not believing it would be to your disadvantage. So let's go to Luke. Because all I've given you is scripture. They've given you riddles, I've given you scripture. Luke chapter 13, beginning at verse 10. We can see how these things work, alright? Watch this. And he which was Jesus was teaching. In one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman, uh huh, which had a spirit of infirmity. The word infirmity means she was sick. Mm, she was a sick woman. Now, watch this. When Jesus described her sickness, he put a prefix there. And what was it? Spirit. Therefore, it means something we can't see, it is not tangible. However, the effects of it is clearly illustrated on this woman because she's bent over. But Jesus is saying, listen, you're only listening, you know, 
there is a they sent a spirit of infirmity on this woman. Let's read it again because you all ain't listening. Listen. Verse 10 of Luke 13. And he, which is Jesus, was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. How long she had it? For 18 years. They had obey on her then. Let me put it that way. See, you get They had Santeria on her. They had witchcraft, voodoo. That's what they had on her. And, 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 and clearly there was something going on with her that made her susceptible to it. I'm trying to help you. For 18 years. And she was, as a result of this spirit upon her, the spirit had her contorted where she couldn't stand up straight. And could in no wise lift up herself. Verse 12. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. And said unto her, listen, listen, woman, listen, thou art loose. That word in the Greek, loose, means to be released. Well, the only way you could be released was something, something had you tie up, eh? Be thou loose or released, listen, listen, from thine infirmity. So Jesus is saying, mess what on you? This ain't natural. He did this to you. Someone did this to you. He said, be thou loose. And what it was on her, a devil, a demon. Well, Kevin, you better prove this, and I will prove it. Okay? Now watch this now. Let's go down to verse 15. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, because of course at this point the church people get mad at, at, at Jesus for healing her because they realize that if we could have used this as a gimmick for more seed. <laughs> so you know they let him have it, right? They let Jesus have it because Jesus wouldn't, wouldn't try to squeeze a seed out of that healing. She get a whole healing and she ain't free up of no seed. Oh, no, 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 that don't work like that. So they ran the riot after Jesus, right? These two, it was no good from back then, mighty Lord. But anyway, <laughs> verse 15, the Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, God, Jesus now talking to the, the, the priest and so on. Do not each of you on the Sabbath day lose his ox, or his donkey from the stall and lead him away to watering. So what they try to do now, then this is how wicked people are, right? This woman who was bound for 18 years, Jesus Christ released her from the spirit that had her in that clearly uncomfortable position. Before the so-called men of God say, my God, look at the power of God, eh? This is so good. What they did is, as usual, I did a, a teaching on this called Snakes Always Change the Narrative. So what they did is they took the focus of the healing and now they reverted to the Sabbath day. So now they're chastising them. My Lord, I mean, how dare you? This is sacrilege. You actually healing on the Sabbath day? What is wrong with you, man? You up and down delivering people and setting them free from poverty, sickness, disease, brokenhearted. What is wrong with you? Listen to this. You who took their money all these, these years, no fruit, no deliverance. So to deflect all of that, what we do? Well, now let's take a holy day and say he's violating the day. Forget the woman who was healed. No. My Lord. Anyway, verse 16, Jesus continuing. Jesus says, and ought not this woman, listen, listen, because remember what he said earlier. He said, miss, you have a spirit of infirmity. That's one. Two, it says that Jesus loose or release to release meaning something had you held or bound but we couldn't see it they couldn't see it because he said what it was a spirit that you couldn't see but it was there whether you could see it or not that doesn't change the rules whether you believe it's there or not that doesn't change the rules so the scripture goes on to say verse 16 and jesus says and ought not this woman listen being a daughter of abraham meaning she came to that lineage whom satan listen had bound, that's what he released her from. Because the word bound means to tie up, to ensnare, to trap. But the word loose means to release from that. So Jesus is now telling us the core of what had her tied up. But it was something that we couldn't see, which was the devil, demons, evil powers. Specifically, a spirit of infirmity was sent to her and tied her down. But the power of the living God was what broke it from her. I'm trying to help you today. I'm trying to help you to, I'm trying to tra train you to see things from a spiritual perspective. That's why I hate it. I can never stop talking about it. I hate these devils who are trying to get you to give them money to release you from spirits. They are obey workers themselves. That's why. 
They come from background of witchcraft and obey and voodoo, and they try to to bring it into God's house. Get out of here, you devil! Get out of here, you demon! I will expose you today. I will expose you devils today. So that's why you got to be careful who you're going to. Who are always trying to tell you what God showed them. God sh Look at their life. How come God showed them all these things and revealing all these things to them and nothing happening for them? They broke like the Ten Commandments, hustling from poison to poison. Got people paying their rent, doing this, paying their power, their water. Why is God giving you this gift? And, and, and God ain't helping you? But you could help everybody else. You devil, never. Get out of here. But what you don't see in the night time is they, 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 they in line with numbers waiting for their time to go in the graveyard work with you all day and night. I come to expose you all devils today. So, let's end with this one, right? We can, we've only been in the foundation and we can come back here later, okay? So let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. And what I get you to see in the covenant that's being, you, whoever this man is, you are so, you are tied to an altar. There's an evil spirit that's assigned to your life. Right now as I speak to you. It got you tied in the realm of the spirit. In fact, one of the major things that's happening to you, just to, you, this is how you know God speaking through me to you. There's a spirit of procrastination that came on you. You, 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 you desire to do certain things. You get up, you walk around the house, you walk around the apartment, and you find yourself right back on the couch again, flipping through the channels. You're restless. You're home, you feel lonely, you just start crying for no reason. You're now thinking about your uncle and your mommy, the mood, and pass on and die. But that ain't the reason why you're crying. No, that's what that spirit brings into your mind to make you think that all of this is manipulation. It's those spirits taking turns on you, so. They even notice the job, you and yourself. You went all your blood pressure high. You never had that before. They sent a spirit of infirmity to you, sir. I'm trying to help you. That's what they sent to you, the spirit of infirmity. You out of your mind. Mm -hmm. You cut off your ma, you cut off all your sisters and brothers. But look at the common denominator in your life. You listen to me. Want me to take it a step further for you? Want me to help you? This is how you can know the Lord speaking through me to you. The one who's doing it to you hate all your children. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Every last one of your children, which you didn't have with them, they cannot stand. You listening to me? I hope you're hearing me. They're trying to get you to cut off mommy every They want you to change everything because the devil got them. They're trying to help you, sir. I'm trying to help you, sir. I'm trying to help you, sir. I'm trying to help you, sir. You all know, those of you who listen to me right now, you all better go. Listen, Jesus Christ said himself, this kind will only come out through prayer and fasting. You hear me? If God could open your eyes to see the demons trafficking in and out of that place, that was a sign there, you would run there. Let me quickly read the scripture. Because my is going. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel chapter no, First Samuel chapter twenty eight. Sorry, First Samuel chapter twenty eight. Listen to this now. We're gonna begin at verse six. All right. This, of course, is when God had enough for King Saul and shut him down altogether. So, beginning at verse six of First Samuel twenty eight, and when Saul inquired of the Lord or tried to seek God, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams nor by you rim nor by prophets. So God ain't speaking to him no more. And this is where false prophets and prophetess is going to take advantage of you. You know their things and unforgiveness you got in your heart. So God says, listen, if you refuse to give your brothers and sisters, I'm not answering you. I'm not listening to you. So we think the devil can push you to that same false prophetess, that same false prophet to talk mess to you all day, to tell you what you want to hear. So the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 28, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servant, listen what he can do now. Seek me a woman that have a familiar spirit. So that means seek me a witch, or seek me a false prophet or prophetess. Seek me a wizard or a warlock, because they are the ones who a familiar spirit is assigned to. I told you that earlier. So Saul said, seek me a woman with a familiar spirit, that I may go to her, and inquire or let her or consult with her so she could tell me 
the events of the future, or tell me or summons Samuel to me, which is impossible. And so I'll then said so unto his servant, Seek me a woman that have a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said, Behold, there is a woman that have a familiar spirit of an Endor, a witch of Endor. Verse 8 of Samuel 28. And Saul disguised himself and put on and put on other raiment, and he went and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night, and he said, So he's coming to the witch doctor by night, which most of you do at night and he said I pray thee divine or call up unto me by the familiar spirit meaning that I know how you do it so get your familiar spirit that assists you in your magic in your sorcery see if you could get this familiar spirit listen to this now to to bring Samuel the dead prophet back from the grave even though the God of all creation shut down everything so that's the first red flag. How could a witch, this is how you know it wasn't Samuel that was called up. This is a masquerading spirit, like I've been telling you earlier. And the people who are under these curses, these are, this is the protocol that they go through. And young man, old man, you hear me right now, you know what I'm talking about? You constantly dreaming about your deceased mommy, grandmother, your deceased children, or your deceased wife, or whoever. Why? But only since you hook up with this chick over here, because they're working on you, bro. And this is the evidence of it. Your, your dreams are going to be filled with masquerading spirits. Whether they're dead or whether they're living. They're trying to help you. That's what they're trying to do for you. Listen. So he says here, to inquire of her. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman uh, who have a familiar spirit. And saw this guy as himself. All right. And put on other raiment. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine up. Divine unto me by the Spirit, and bring me up, bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. So he's asking her to get your evil spirits to perform for me. And I can tell you the person I want you to bring up for me. Verse 9 of 1 Samuel 28. And the woman said unto him, the witch said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul had done how he had cut off those that have familiar spirit and the wizards out of the land, wherefore they layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die. She didn't realize she was talking to Saul yet. Same one who banished them out of the land of Israel. And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, listen to this guy, getting God's name up in this. As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Who shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up, Samuel. Wow. And when the woman saw Samuel, listen now, she cried. Now remember, for, let me talk to the saints now, because I know a lot of you, when you read this story, you are convinced, you are convinced that this, that this woman, I want you to listen to what you're convinced about. You are convinced that a witch, a witch, was able to circumvent the fact that God had discontinued through his prophets, through dreams, and through you, rooms, U R I M S, in terms of communicating to Saul. So God dismissed him and ostracized him altogether. So you're saying to me that God is going to allow a worker of Satan, a witch, with whatever power she had to go and snatch Samuel from wherever he is and bring him to Saul? When the Bible in uh, Deuteronomy 18 verses 9 to 11 tell us that we should have no affiliations with necromancy or quote unquote speaking to the dead, when the Bible says to us in Ecclesiastes 9 verses 4 to 6 that the living know that they shall die but the dead knows nothing, when a person dies, their love, their hate, their whatever else comes to an end and that they have no more uh, which I'm call it under the sun. And scripture after scripture telling us that when a person is dead, they have not no more whatever dreams you're having about deceased people, that is masquerading spirits. The Bible says Satan in the book of Corinthians says even Satan himself have the ability to transform, to masquerade, to change as an angel of light. Listen, so does his ministers or those that serve him. They have that ability. 
So when you having these dreams, sir, over and over, you keep dreaming, but, 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 in spite of those dreams, this woman who did this to you, you're always seeing her in the dream. And it's never a good dream. It's always, either she down, you see her down by the sea. It's almost as if she's bowing and getting up, bowing and getting up. And then you begin to see images. It's like she's calling on something. Or coming to you in the dream to sleep with you. But when you have that, it will always be a certain time in the air, in, in the year, where you either having intercourse with her in the dream or you're eating something. But it seems to be the same dream repeating itself. What does that mean, Mr. Ewing? It means that the covenant that they made at that evil altar for you, they have to renew it every year at the same time. Hence, the dream becomes the fruit of that or the evidence to you, the victim. So the story goes on to say, oh, listen, let's go back here now. In verse 9, And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest that, no, verse 10, And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And of course he said, Samuel, verse 12, of 1 Samuel 20, it says, And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. She realized now this is Saul. Verse 13. And the king, which is Saul, said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? What did you see? Listen now. This is how you know it's a masquerading spirit. Because remember now, she says she's all Saul, right? But listen to the details of what she said uh, in verse 13. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, uh -huh, I saw God's, now sorry, you said just, I said Saul, I'm sorry. She said she saw Samuel. Now she's saying, I saw God, small g, God's plural, ascending out of the earth. All right? And he said unto her, what form is he of? But remember now, she said, A, she saw Saul. That's singular, one person. Sorry, Samuel. That's singular, that's one person. So she said, what form was he in? Now she's saying she saw gods. And what did God tell them? Do not serve their gods. So these gods, these evil spirits, are able to transform or take on the likeness or the image or masquerade as the prophet Samuel. Watch this. And the king said unto her, be not afraid. Sorry, wait right now. Verse 14. And he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, an old man, listen, an old man coming up. And he is covered with a mantle. You said a masquerading exactly like how he was in the natural. And Saul perceived or understood that it was Samuel. And he stopped, and he stooped, sorry, with his face to the ground and bowed himself. So this is an evil spirit that's masquerading as the prophet Samuel, right? Whom Saul is now bowing to. Watch this now. Now he's about to consult with this evil spirit that he thinks is Samuel. And Samuel, verse 15 of 1 Samuel 28, And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am so distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me, and answered me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams, neither I have Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I should do. Now this right here should stand out. Saul is admitting to this masquerading spirit that he thinks is Samuel, that God has shut him down altogether. So he decided to go to someone seemingly greater than God, which is Samuel. Just how messed up he was under the spell. But remember, he had an evil spirit on him after... Uh, God took the 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 the, uh, the anointing of kingship from him and rested upon uh, David. Verse sixteen. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and has become thine enemy? Remember, this is a spirit, evil spirit, masquerading as Samuel. Verse seventeen of First Samuel twenty-eight. And the Lord had done to him as he spoke by me, for the Lord had tore the kingdom out of thine hand. And give it to thy neighbor, even David. So you see what I was telling you. Familiar spirits, which is uh, seem as masquerading spirits, 
because they monitor you consistently, they're fully aware of all of the events that has happened with you. So therefore, they are able to bring up pertinent information to convince you further that you're dealing with the actual person. Long story short, this, this spirit is now going to tell uh, King Saul, and this is going to be true. He says, tomorrow this time, you and your sons, listen, are going to be down here with us. But Saul is thinking they're going to be with Samuel. But no, 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 no. This is an evil spirit masquerading as Samuel. Okay? Now, let me prove this to you. All right? Seeing that you, you, you don't seem to be convinced. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Begin right here. And verse 13, because we're going to see the reason why Saul died. And this is going to be the piece to the puzzle to prove my point. He never spoke with Samuel, and it was a spirit pretending to be Samuel. And I gave you the, the, the scripture in, in Corinthians where Satan, as well as his servants, have the ability to, to transform or to masquerade or mimic the likeness of somebody else. Okay, so let's end right here. First Chronicles chapter 10. Let's look at verse 13. Listen what it says. The Bible says, So Saul did die, just like the evil spirit predicted. Saul died for his transgressions, which he committed against the Lord. Listen, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. And which was that? And also, listen, listen, for asking counsel of one that had a, a familiar spirit, to inquire of it. So the Bible is saying that this man went through demonic means and having someone who had a familiar spirit, which in this case was a witch, who misled him, well, the spirit misled them, believing that it was Samuel that they called up. Again, let me say this. I'm speaking to the men. For the next uh, two weeks from now, I'm going to be dealing with this topic. And everything that I'm telling you here, you're going to be able to resonate with. And you can know I'm telling the truth because I don't know you and you don't know me. But because I've dealt with this personally before, I can speak from a personal perspective and now tie in the scriptures to show you that this is an hocus pocus. This is why you're having these dreams about the graveyard. You're having these dreams where you dream about casket or you see yourself sleeping with graves. Excuse me. What this means is that they send a spirit of death behind you. Or you see dead people following you. See, what you're seeing in the dream and what's happening to you physically, these are all the physical evidence of the spiritual entities that they have sent behind you. And read the Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, for your wisdom, for your knowledge, for your understanding. Thank you, as usual, for the ability to break down your word to your people, that even a child can understand it. Now it is my prayer, Lord. That they don't just take my word, but be like the Bereans. And every scripture that I've given them, and every other supporting scripture, that they will go and do exactly what your law says. And that is to study, to show themselves a proof. Your word also says that they are responsible for working out their own salvation. That's not left to a preacher, teacher, apostle, or whoever. Our job is to teach the unadulterated word only. And now they must now go and engage the word of God to now reap the benefits of what that word says. I pray over every every person, Father God, that's under the curse of witchcraft powers, their, their names or, or, or pictures or their underwear or whatever it is that is placed in bottles and buried in cemeteries and buried on properties or was tossed into the ocean, all symbolic of misplacing or realigning their destiny. It is my prayer, Lord, that you bring these people back to who they originally were and that the curses be severed and those who would have done this to them be exposed for their wickedness and their greed and selfishness, not realizing that the things that they have done to that person is only a matter of time. They had no idea. That's why you said to them, if they put their hand to these things, it's a trap that they're setting for not only the person but themselves because the reality is, they're securing a time in the future when that evil that they did is going to come back for them. In fact, I pray for the children right now 
because what they have done is open up the door for generational curses. So whatever they called up from that altar, whether it was a spirit of death, torment, suicide, depression, anger, whatever it is, now they're going to see it display in their children's lives if those children don't live for God because that's how the generational curses flow. He said, I will visit the iniquity to the third and fourth generation to a specific group though, to those that hate me, mean those who don't follow his laws, his rules, or accept Jesus Christ. So they will now become candidates or vulnerable to now become possessed or at minimum oppressed by these spirits that mummy called up. That mummy who now claimed to be saved and never repented, never renounced, never break the curse, is now seeing what she did to her husband, their daddy, now play out in the children's lives and even her life. All of them under the spirit of poverty, all of them under the spirit of confusion, all of them under the spirit of limitation, all of them under the spirit of where they can never progress in life, anti-progress. They're stuck. Why? Because mommy decided to go and engage in evil power. She wouldn't admit it, but she don't have to admit it because the evidence is there. And now everybody has been enslaved as a result of it. Father, I pray that you visit that home. I pray that in them listening to me right now, that they will be convicted and go before you and repent because you said that a contrite heart and a broken spirit you will never despise. So Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we praise you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So folks, that is it for me. I will see you next week. And again, I will put all of the links to my good friend, Caroline Green, her books, the shirt. If you want to get one of these, I'm going to put the website. I'm also going to put the link to the copy of the book, 1010, the Bible 10. I want you to read it for yourself to see these things. And next week, we'll be back going even deeper into this 